Okay, welcome everybody to, oh, reach over there, Coffee and Art in the Morning. I'm Dee Dee. Thanks for joining us. This is a live show on Ustream.tv. So if you're watching the recording on YouTube, thanks for watching the recording. So we're talking with a live chat with mostly awake people. <laughs> so we're going to do a little bit first. We're going to do a couple different segments. We're going to do a segment in um, our idea collecting, society idea collecting, or idea of collectors, whatever you want to call it. We're collecting ideas, and we're a group of people. So <laughs> anyway, so I, I'm going to add to our ideas here. And again, I'm working in a couple different composition books for examples, okay? I also have the traveler size. And again, I usually don't put tabs. I don't put tabs in my Traveler's portable idea collecting, but I put them on there just for you guys to show you. But this is my one that I take out or go, this is my portable uh, one. I don't work in the composition books, but I'm trying to show people you can work in whatever's whatever you like the best. A lot of people like the Traveler size, Midori size. Um, this is my Adorable that uh, Sister Woman Jana made this cover. And I just made my own inserts. But if you like this size, or if you just want a composition book, that's fine. My main, um, <clears throat> my main idea collecting book is a big three-ring binder. So I have this big three-ring binder. <laughs> this is my main idea collecting place. But that being said, when I'm uh, you know, around the house or something like that, this is where I collect my ideas on post-it notes. Then they get stuck in books and or transferred and expanded on in the idea books. If you all have any questions, put them in caps so I know you're talking to me because the chat goes by pretty fast. So I made a couple examples here. Here I put the tabs in this one just to show and I just put the kind of tabs that I, I use. Um, I put some little decorative paper clips on here just to show you that you can decorate these as much as you want. My idea notebooks are really not painted, drawn in, decorated. Okay, um, you can do however you want. Depends on how much you want to use it. I'm going to tell you three videos that I saw over the weekend, and I'll link them in the description box uh, at, after the show that you can go see different people's way of doing their idea collecting work. So my tabs, I'm just going to kind of reiterate here, my tabs are what works for me. These tabs may not be what your passions are. <clears throat> for instance, I told you I like uh, I love history. So I have a history tab. You may not want a history tab. One of the girls that, that I'm going to link you to, <coughs> hers is gardening. Kate the Skate. Uh, Kate the Skate, I don't, think she, I don't know if she's here. But anyway, she, uh, one of her passions is gardening. So she would have a gardening tab. I don't have a gardening tab. Uh, when Boo was littler, she and I had a, a gardening notebook. But I don't, I, and I do garden. I have a vegetable garden, a little bit of flowers, but I don't have a tab for that. Um, so, yes, I showed that. I did uh, talk about that, Carol Renee Tangy Backer's big fluffy book from seven, eight years ago. Yeah, I, show, I linked that in my Twitter. Yeah, uh, but this is, that's an that's a art journal type. What we're talking about here, you can turn it into an art journal. It can be your art journal. But for m my main focus on this, guys, because you know how many different art journals. We have mixed media. We have collage. We have the altered books. We have glue books. We have every kind of art journaling book. If you want to turn your idea collecting book into an art journal type thing, that's great. That's not the purpose of what I'm trying to get across here, though. Okay, I'm not decorating these. I mean, I might paint a tab or show you some decorative something, but that's not the point of the idea collecting. I want to kind of stress that because if you think I'm going to show you how to do a decor decorated art journal, that's not what we're doing. 
<laughs> okay? You can do it any way you want. We have, I have hundreds of art journaling videos in my playlist that you can uh, incorporate any of those ideas into your idea notebook if you so wish. But my purpose of this is to get you to think and, and question and, and wonder and, uh, about ideas. Okay? So, again, I may do a little bit of decorating here or there. I cut some tabs out of some pretty paper. These I just wrote down. Um, different things like that. But that's not the point. Okay, so, again, I just did a quick little um, tabs here. I think it was in part one. So now I'm going to just kind of keep going here with the ideas. Okay? <laughs> yes, and my, my tabs have sub-tabs. In my big notebook. Again, guys, I don't, this is not the way I collect my ideas anymore. You know, most of the time my quick ideas are done on post it notes. These get stuck in my either travelers or my big binder. And then I go and, and explore those ideas further in my big binder. But I understand that most people do not want a big three ring binder full of ideas. Or a huge book. For one, it's not portable. That's why I say a, a something like this or your traveler's size, Midori size, is good for taking around with you. Okay? And I'm going to get the teacher's voice. I can hear it. I can hear myself. <laughs> okay, so my tabs that I have were supplies, words and definitions, because I love words and definitions, colors, symbols and history, lists, quotes my mind maps and uh, other ideas, um, current projects, uh, and I told y'all you could have a health tab, uh, if you want a spiritual tab, interest, references, like in, and in references I mean like anything, whether it's in a book, and I definitely recommend having a reference tab. In a book, if you find something in a book online, Pinterest, YouTube channels, whatever that is, have a reference tab because you'll that way you can find remember where you found a certain ideas. Okay, so what do I have here? Show okay, all right, so let's continue on. I wanted to make, I wanted to, um, the, all right, let's go back again. Let's review. This is the most important thing right here is the your topic your idea or I could put passion here too I'm gonna add that because that kind of explains it more where's my pen where's my pen <laughs> and I did have someone on uh, YouTube go you have unusual writing they saw some other one of my videos here where I'm with I'm writing with a big sharpie really big and and the reason I do this guys I don't do I don't write like this I write very very tiny yeah, Terry, for sure. Um, but it won't show up on camera. So this is for your benefit. This big, black, bold writing with the Sharpie is for the camera. So this is not how I normally write. Not that it matters. But I just want to say that the reason I write these big, black, bold lettering like this is so you guys can see it. So anyway, your topic, your idea, or your passion. Question all of that. So for instance... Um, uh, and I have it in this book here. This is where I'm collecting my ideas for you guys. This is just my little sample one. So I, I'm kind of working in two. Okay. So first off, I, I, we talked about before, what is your passion? What is your t main thing that you love? And I know we all love art because that's why we, we all come to the shows in our YouTube channels and our Ustreams for the art. So... If, if you're just going to say art, break it down at least. Break it down and do I like to draw, do I like to paint, do I like to art journal. Break it down some. Okay? Uh, don't just say art. Okay? And again, this over here is very broad and general as well. Um, do you like art, music, writing, reading, fashion, history, theology, whatever it is that you like? Find find the thing that really gets you up in the morning. <laughs> you know, what is your passion? And if you say art, then make sure you break that out into specifics. Okay, so...
and then I said to, uh, for our um, for the list that we did last week, I told you to make three lists. Now that's all in here. I just wanted to remind myself to tell you that. So let's go over to this one I'm, again. I'm working out a two <laughs> for you guys. Um, <clears throat> So I have all, let me just kind of flip through this book to show you what I have. This is how I'm noting, this is my notes for this, for, for the idea collector. Okay, this is my notes. Look, this is how I'm collecting ideas for you guys. Uh, and there's more in here under the tabs. So, okay. Now I don't want to confuse you, so let me just move this over to the side. Because <laughs> that's going to look like, what, what? Okay, so first off, let me just pull the notes off here. Because I want to tell y'all about the three people that I saw. Oh, I didn't even see your question, Jean. I'm sorry. I, yeah, right now, guys, I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to chat. Because I'm trying to get this all out. So kind of save your questions for till I get the bulk of this out. So, Kate the Skate 22, Kate the Skate, and gardening is like one of her passions. She's an art teacher, though, but she, she, did, she showed her book, and um, she showed it on her lap while she was out, I think, sitting in the sun. And she said something about, she called it her little brain. And I just, I wanted to make sure and, and quote her on that because she was calling her idea collector her little brain. And I really like that. When I watched her video, so Kate the Skate 22, Sonia Mixed Media. Now she's working in quilts right now. She's doing quilts, but she has and she but she does a lot of art journaling stuff. Sonia Mixed Media on YouTube, and so again, I want I'm trying to point out what their passions are so that you can see how you connect your passions to your questions. Um button uh, I, I wanted y'all to make three lists a list of people and or occupations in other words don't just say you know a man woman child like do some occupations like you know because kind of to identify a person person place and thing I wanted you to do I wanted you to do 50 in each column and you don't have to there's here let me let me say let me keep stressing this this is not, this homework, if you will, is not like something that is like a strict rule. You got to do this or you can't, you know, it's not like that. One of the things about idea collecting in your notebook has to be very you. It has to be very fluid in your thinking, in your ideas, in your creativity. It has to be you, not me. So just because I say this, 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 or that, let, let that spark ideas. Let it spark ideas. Don't just look at it like, oh, I have to do this and that. Because then all you're going to be doing is you're going to be doing my ideas, not your ideas. Does that make sense? So that's why every week that I'm going to try to find people, and I hope they'll link me or anybody that's watching this will link me. If you're doing videos, uh, link me in your video so that I can go watch it. And or tell me somehow Twitter, however you want to do it, that you you did a video on your your way, your version of idea collecting, so that I can pass that on to everybody, so that everybody can see all different all different types of ways to do your idea collecting. It's not. Don't worry about it, button. It's not like you have to have it done today. <laughs> Anyway, so the other person um, that is, I wanted y'all to, to see is Mary Altier. The, the Mary Altier, I think, is how she has it. She, and remember when I linked her before to the idea, I mean, to the mini playground, our little... Here. And I still have this, and we're still going to play in it. So this is the, um, the mini magazine idea collecting prompt playground and it's magazines cut in half and glued together and so that you can play with paint and ideas and and play well mary did hers full full size like we've done some full size ones here hang on let me grab a couple i have three or four of these these are the the full size magazine playgrounds Okay, where there's magazines glued together, 
and painted and reverse collage, reverse painting. Well, Mary did hers like this. She did hers really big. She didn't cut hers in half. So she asked me, she said, well, I thought our mini, the playground was, I mean, the idea collecting was going to be in the playground. Well, the little one that we did, the mini magazine playground, is really not big enough. But Mary is doing hers full size with, I think she has 800 and something pages in her magazines that are glued together. So I told, I said, Mary, yours is plenty big enough to collect your ideas in. But it's kind of uh, confining to collect all your ideas in a small book. Um, you could collect, you know, some things in there. Maybe your painting ideas or if you wanted to do it in your, make it your music or whatever, you know, main topic. Gardening. Yes, yeah, so Mary... A-T-E-L-I-E-R. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. And I'll put links to their videos. So anyway, she's using her oversized big magazine um, playground as her idea collecting. And oh my gosh, she, <laughs> she is, hers looks like this. I mean, even more so. And uh, so she really is expanding on the ideas. And Mary likes to write and art journal, but she's also a writer. So I think that part of her uh, mind mapping and developing characters and things comes from her writer's heart. And so when you go watch Mary's, do not think that you have to do yours like Mary. But Mary has expanded hers, and it's very like this okay even more so so I just want to say that okay so in week one now remember um, I think we need to do a page here to remind ourselves let's see let's do it in this one <clears throat> your passion because, and if you have more than one, that's fine. But I would, I would try to focus on a couple. You know, if you're trying to, you say you got 50 passions, you're not probably going to get a whole lot of specific ideas. Specific ideas on your passion if you have hundreds. So kind of, you know, try to narrow it down to a couple when you're trying to, uh, you know, think about ideas. All right, so let's go back here. All right. And I'm not a teacher, guys. I'm just doing my best to explain to you how to do some idea collecting here. All right? Um, yes. Uh, yes. And Altier is a private, like a private art studio. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so what I wanted you to do, let me take all these post-it notes off and I'll show you this stuff here. Let's go over here. And I, these are all things I wanted to remind myself to tell you. Okay, so I had y'all do, maybe this was in week one, and then we went expanded into week two. It, again, guys, I'm not trying to give you homework that you have to have done in a, you know, it's not about that. I, I can't stress that enough. It's all about you generating ideas for yourself. Okay, Kay Moore. Okay, so um, not a time frame on these ideas. It's about exploring your passions and questioning how to develop those. So I want to make sure I write these things down when they come to me. Like uh, someone will ask me a question and like, when do I have to have this done by? I'll make myself a note to tell you guys. It's not about time. It's not about a time frame. <laughs> okay. Um, you have to collect ideas that appeal to you. <laughs> Your passions. And I did write a few examples, and I told y'all a minute ago, like gardening, music, you know, my, my like history. But here's some I wrote down. Music, photography, drawing, illustration, reading, um, writing, like I said, gardening, children's books, um, you know, something. Try to keep a focus on something. Um, part of the, the how, how things work <laughs> is if you can keep focus. And I know 
as artists, we're always we're wanting to go try this and try that. Nothing. I'm not telling anybody not to do that. But I'm just saying, if you really want to either get better at something, if you let's just say like Jean, watercoloring. Jean is really working and focused on learning watercoloring. She's bought different kinds of watercolors. She's taken classes. She watches like um, the mind of uh, watercolor Steve um, sh and and other videos on watercolor. I mean, I always like to just use Jean as an example because she's handy. <laughs> <laughs> hey Prisma and uh, so she's focusing that doesn't mean that she'll never do an art journal page it doesn't mean she'll never build another cubby it doesn't mean that she'll never do XYZ it just means right now she's focused on her watercolor and learning it and she's doing the one of those challenges where you do a watercolor every day she made her a little book to do watercolor hand stitched it so my point is here yes your auntie jean my point is is you gotta at least for the moment for the time you want to learn something you have to focus on that you know um yeah um and I made a note to those you one that asked me about the small playground. Uh, that's that's what uh, Mary was asking me or asking about. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, this was this. I can throw that away, and that is the note for today. I can throw that away. Okay, so here's kind of what I want you to practice, and it doesn't don't make it a don't make it a rule or anything, but if you have had I told you to do 20 to 50. Either people or occupations. Just something that represented people. Okay? 20 to 50 places. 20 to 50 things. And something off of a, a color set. I just said design.seeds.com. Uh, but wherever you can get, you know, five or six colors together that you like. Or that appeal to you. Or wherever you want to gather them from. <clears throat> Um, so just a color set, wherever you want to get it from. I, like I said, Design Dash Seeds has little palette colors with a little photograph next to it. And, um, for, to, for color inspiration, I just wanted you to have some color and that's an easy way to get a good color combination. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I want you to do a circle. Let's find another page here. Let's, oh, wait. This is the one we're working out of. What I wanted you to do was have... Let's see where I, where's the best way. Oh, I, got, I can't get to the supplies yet. We're going to do that in a minute. Let's just have a blank sheet here. Okay, so what I want you to do is find, do this. Okay, put your passion... Even if it's just the passion of the moment, okay, gardening, quilting, writing, music, whatever it is. Jean's a music teacher, but she's working on her watercoloring. So you see, it doesn't have to be confining, okay? And then what I want you to do is your, now don't, hang on, I'm going to tell you how to pick a person, place, and thing from your list. And of course, you'll have your color combination somewhere that will just connect in, in a minute. And I know this probably sounds like, if you want more explanation on something, I try my best. I over explain sometimes, but I try to get as much out there as I can, like trying to like dump everything out in one. Hubster always says that. You try to put everything in one, one thing, and it's, you know, and I know I do. Okay, so now, on your list where you've made your person, place, or thing, I'll go back to the supplies. Oh, wait, that's in this book here. I don't know if working out two books is going too smart, but. <laughs> okay, what I wanted you to do, however many, I said 50. Uh, let's just, you know, if you, because I'm going to give you numbers. So number your person, place, or things, because I want, the reason I'm going to do that is so it's random. Because if you, if. If you have all your people, places, and things, you're going to pick, like, certain things. And I'm trying to get you to be random on this exercise. <clears throat> I figure out why I don't like things. I do, I do. I perfectly organize books and journals. I'm just trying to do 
Yeah, and and if this doesn't work for you, I'm not I'm not telling anybody. Here's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get you to think outside the box. I get a lot of people says, but I don't do it that way. I put it on my phone. I put it on my computer. I just keep it all on Pinterest. Um, and Jean, my mind's already organized. <laughs> you know, I understand all that. This is to get you to think outside your box, and that's that's where I'm, I go with this. I, I try to get you to think outside the box. I'm not fussing at you, Jean. You're just handy. <laughs> Okay, so I am going to tell you, so if you have 20 to 50 here, okay, I'm going to give you all some numbers, one, two, three numbers, and what I want you to do is go from your list of your people, your places, and your things. So, I'm just going to randomly pick numbers out of my head. Okay, so number 14, number 30, and number 2, okay? So, Whatever your list is, just number them and pick number 14, number 30, and number 2. People, 14. Places, pick your whatever your number 30 is. Like, let's say places, your number 30 is France. Okay? <laughs> and things, let's just say it was a pen. Number 2 was a pen. So whatever your list is. So this way, the reason I'm doing it this way, guys, is that way everybody is different. Nobody is going to have the same number 14. No one is going to have number 30 as France. No, not everybody is going to have number 2 as a pen. You see, what, you see what I'm talking about? Does that make sense? So everybody's list, everybody's um, questioning and div an idea, I don't even know what I want to call it, uh, ex exploration. Everybody's idea exploration is going to be different than yours. So in other words, Jean and, and Terry are not going to have the same France or the same astronaut or the same pen. Everybody's list is going to be different. And that's why I wanted y'all to make a list and number it. And I'm just giving you random numbers because no two peoples are going to be the same. Okay, so now we're going to go over back over to, where's our, here. So now I want you to write that person, that place, let's just say it was France, astronaut, and a pen. Okay, I just randomly said those, I just, you know, whatever yours are. <laughs> now here's, this is where you start questioning everything. So let's just say your pass passion was gardening. I'm just using Kate's as an example. That's the, that's the passion that you're focused on. Now what I want you to do, and this is very subjective and personal to your thinking, okay? This is what makes it your ideas, not my ideas. What I want you to do is question your five questions, who, what, where, when, why, and how, and just... You sh and this is also where your imagination gets developed and, and explored. I get so many people say, I don't have an imagination. And I say, yeah, you do. No, I don't have an imagination. But you're very creative. No, I don't have any creativity. I have no imagination. And that's just not true. <laughs> you're just not using it, you know. That's like saying, I have no arm muscle. I can't pick up a five-pound weight, so therefore I have no arm muscle. No, you have an arm muscle. <laughs> You're just not using it. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. So what I want you to do now is in your imagination, and I'll show you mine next week because I don't want mine to influence yours. Okay? I want you to take your five who, what, where, when, why, and how with your astronaut and your gardening. I want you to ask your place, France, who, what, where, why, when, and how in France connected to gardening. Take your pen. Who, what, where, when, why, and how connected to gardening. Maybe that means writing. Maybe that what comes to your mind is writing an article on gardening. And I'm using Kate as an example because gardening was her thing or one of her passions. Maybe the first thing that comes to your mind, I would love to write an article. Just the, the thought of a pen. Just the thought of a pen makes you think about writing a gardening article. It may not have anything to do with the astronaut, 
But right now you want to ask all the questions individually. Gardening pen. Gardening France. Gardening astronaut. Or whatever your your five your three things were. You can also at any time use your color combination. Maybe and again, I'm just throwing this out there for an example. Don't just this is just an example. So you you're you're thinking about writing up an article on gardening, and these color combinations are before you, and you see blue, purple, and a yellow flower. Maybe that makes you think of pansies. You know, your maybe your color combination has the colors of a pansy, and that's what comes to your mind. Okay. Hey, gardening in space. What would a what would a garden on the moon look like? How would how who, what, where, why, when, or who, what, where, when, why, and how? Is that six questions? <laughs> I think it's six. Who, what, where, when, why, and how is the six? Yeah. Well, I guess I'd better correct that. I always think of the how as the extra. <laughs> Okay. All right. So you have your questions. And now, I got sidetracked, Jean. Astronauts on <laughs> space. Guarding on that with astronauts. Okay. So what if, how, how, would, how would that look? How would it, maybe if you're science-minded, maybe the, the technology of hydro gardening would come to your mind. So even though you will never probably go to the moon and hydro garden, what, how, how could that be used, in, not necessarily on the moon, but it just the idea of hydro gardening comes to your mind. So it's all exploring, guys. It's not a formula. It's not a one, two, three, you know, I'm just, I gave you those numbers, just the list to like get you kick-started, right? <laughs> the garden would have to have okra. <laughs> okay, well then how can you hydro garden okra? Okra. Let's spell it right. I wonder if you could hydro garden okra. I mean, yes, yeah, you have to keep expanding. Okay, so after you have introduced gardening to each of your three things and possibly your colors, you know, they're there for your your use. <laughs> Then you can start to try to connect them. Maybe your pen and France could be connected. Maybe your pen and the astronaut. Or maybe the astronaut and France. So you're going to start connecting those. But first question each thing. I know this looks like a hot mess. And I just, you know, I didn't make a chart or anything. I just... <laughs> so the, I, the whole total idea of idea collecting is questioning. That's why I told y'all put this in the front of your book. Your six questions. I don't know why I thought five. Anyway, put your questions at the forefront of everything. And then work it out with, with combinations of themes that you would not consider. And that's where combining things randomly comes to play. Because if you, and I've got so many of these lists in my, in my binders. If you combine these in multiple, in any way, and it's this list, you can make a new one every day if you want. Um, you could add animals in here. Instead of people and occupations, maybe have animals. It, the, the lists are, are endless. Your lists are endless. But if you number them and select randomly from each list... And join it with a topic, idea, or a passion. Question it all, and write out those write out those ideas for each one. You will have, trust me, just the one with the gardening, the pin, the astronaut in France, and that set of colors. You can spend weeks. You can spend weeks on that one one idea. All right, so let me just take a breath and see if there's any questions. Tell me if that 
is making sense to you so far as far as thinking outside the box, questioning things. I'm going to kind of get your feedback for a minute because I just go on a roll. <laughs> I, you know, uh, <laughs> yes, it's a French astronaut growing hydro pansies and writing about it, Beth. Because here's the thing. See how I said about writing an article? Well, you may not write an article about hydro plants on, on the moon, um, okra or pansies, but it may spark you to write a gardening article. And if that's all you get out of all that, you know what? I'm really inspired to write a, a garden. Uh, we have a local magazine. Our, our local gardening society takes uh, submissions, you know, for gardening tips or gardening ideas. Maybe I could look into hydro hydro plant, I don't know what the word is, hydro growing, whatever, <laughs> you know, maybe that's, and then that's, that's water, so what would the air one be, um, you know, growing plants with, with just air, you know, and there's, you know, so I'm just throwing this out there for an example, guys, I'm not telling you to go write an article on gardening, you, you see what I'm saying, I'm not telling you to do that, <laughs> it's new ideas, Yes, and so when those ideas come to you, no matter how weird they seem to be you, just like the astronaut growing okra, write it down because this, the connections of the, the things that are outside of your box. And once you do a little bit, hydro gardening, thanks, Jane. <laughs> hydro <laughs> So when you start doing this, you think, well, that's stupid. That's not going to make me have an imagination or that's not going to give me anything until you do it, until your little brain cells, and I don't mean you have a little brain. I mean, the cells are little, <laughs> until the cells in your brain start sparking in your direction, you won't, you won't understand. You have to do it yourself. Hydrophonic, hydrophonic. Yeah, see now I want to write that down so I don't forget. Hydrophonic. Where's my Matt Astra? <laughs> Thanks, Jean. <laughs> is it? Uh, is it? Is it P H O or no H? Anyway, hydro <laughs> gardening. So, what I'm trying to get across to you here is when you you do this. With your odd list, whatever, you know, 14, 13, and 2 happens to be on your list. When you do this with your passion, and change the passion. Take 14, 13, and 2 and put it to um, reading. So let's say you're, you know, a lot reading, Jen, reading with pugs. There's a whole bunch of girls here that do reading vlogs and, and reading reviews and book reviews and stuff like that. What if you took those questions? Let's go back over here. Let's go back to the right book. Where's that? Where am I keeping this list? See, I got so many lists here. <laughs> okay, so let's just say now. You're going to start with reading, or even more specifically, um, well, let's just go with reading. I don't want to get too deep. And you broke it out into your astronaut, France, and your um, pen. Now, I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you what to do with it, but if you question. Who, what, where, why, when, and how with each of these in conjunction with your passion reading. See what you come up with. <coughs> Phonics is words you don't have to talk to the plants. Phonics is words and you don't have to. Well, see, all right, see now, Jean? Jean just said, talked about the. I gotta keep going back and forth to my books. I need to somehow combine this. Maybe it wasn't this one. Where did I do my sample? Ugh. 
I'm getting lost in my own books. Okay, well, anyway, <laughs> I like the idea of what Jean just said uh, about words, hydrophonic, gardening. And see, I'm, I've got all kinds of ideas running through my head just on those words alone. But they would be my ideas, my, my uh, connections. Okay, so let me just, I'm trying not to, I want to keep it concise, but again, I want to just tell y'all everything. <laughs> All right. Um, let me just l l look at questions for a minute. It's, it's ponics, not phonics. Okay. Hydroponics. Is that how you say it, Jean? Okay, so anyway, but you get the idea. Hey, Lindsay. Drop the H. Okay. Thank you. Where are those sticky notes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now I'm going to talk about, I'm going to break it out into different topics and things. And again, I'm not a teacher. Teachers have special skills that could tell you this in much more step-by-step uh, I don't know. Teachers just have better skills at doing this kind of thing. Explaining. They have better still, uh, skills at explaining. We write down ideas that we get, and from there, you have to decide what to do with the ideas, Grammy. But, we're, we're, but the more you do this, you're going to see how that happens. Okay? I'm, I, I only can do so much at a time. Without really like going like, wow, that's just crazy. I don't get it. You know, I don't want that to happen either. I think the main thing, I'm going to tell you some other things here in a minute. But I think the main thing I'm trying to like, make it as simple as possible. You think I'm explaining it okay? Thanks, Lindsay. I think what happens, guys, is when you do it. It's in the doing of this that you're going to get it. It's just almost something, it's so hard to explain how your brain works, how you make connections in your head that lead you to creative solutions. Those solutions come when you do stuff like this. But, and, but you may not think it does, but until you actually do it, you don't understand it until you do it. It's more fun than school. <laughs> well, you know, and the thing is, guys, it just helps you to question. It helps you to think. It helps you to expand. Rather than just staying in your little box of gardening, you're, this. what this will do, and I just, we just pick gardening, you know. What this does is not just say, oh, I need to get some new hydrangeas for the front, you know. It helps you to see what else you can do. It might take you to the point where I plant hydrangeas in my garden. I love gardening, but I don't really know anything about hydrangeas at all. Well, do you know that the color of your hydrangeas is going to be based on the alkalid or the acidity of your soil, whether you get purple or pink hydrangeas? Well, those kind of things will, you'll find that out <laughs> when you question everything and write it down. Because if it's just in your head, my hydrangeas suck. They're pink and I wanted blue ones. I guess I better go buy a new hydrangea plant because I wanted blue hydrangeas and I'm only getting pink ones. I keep buying the wrong ones. So you go up to the gardening center and you go, you sold me some bad hydrangeas. I'm only getting pink ones. I want the blue hydrangeas. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so if you do a little bit of, you know, questioning everything, you might figure out it's not the hydrangea plant, it's your dirt. <laughs> I'm just going off on an example here. <laughs> yeah. And so if you do these kind of things, you will start to question. Again, guys, the, the, this right here is the most important part of the whole idea collecting. Right here. That's why I say put it at the very beginning of your book. <laughs> and I just colored this just because we wanted to decorate. Okay? Alright, so. <laughs> I'm scaring you with so many ideas. <laughs> okay. 
All right, so now let's see. I have some notes here for the show, for the show, to tell the show, to tell everybody. Okay. Um, here's on expanding. So when your topic in your composition book gets so full, it may need its own book. So for instance, I have my own book on color. So this, this is not going to be enough for me, nor is my three ring binder enough for me. It, a three ring binder is probably going to be enough for everybody to start with. But at some point, you may want to break your passions out into its own book. So I have my own book on color. I have my own book on spiritual. Okay, I froze for a second. I think I got incoming mail. Hang on, guys. So when I get some mail, sometimes it freezes me. <laughs> yeah, it will overstimulate your brain at first doing this. But the thing is, guys, is then you start figuring out, oh, I see, now I can connect this. But you have to write it down. Trust me. Don't just think you can keep all this in your head. Your mind will explode. <laughs> you can't keep you can't keep six questions for every topic with a passion in the center in just in your head. You gotta write it down. Cotton candy hydrangeas for the win. <laughs> but here's the thing, guys. All right, so we're gonna run with Julie's thing about the cotton candy hydrangeas. Here's the thing. Just think if, you, let's say your passion was a children's book. And of course, my I geared more toward art, of course, you know. What if you're, you had a children's book that and there may be one out there already but all everything you grew was and i know i've seen candy gardens but what if you had a book on teaching children well i don't know what you want to teach them because you can't grow well anyway hydrangea cotton candy book in a garden <laughs> sorry julie i ran with your idea see that and it was her idea so i can't run with it too much because it will confuse me. All right, so. <laughs> no, my migraines are not caused by idea overload. You know what migraines are caused by? <laughs> idea unexplored. <laughs> They're all up in your head. You need to write it down. <laughs> if you get it out of your head, then your mind won't be all... <laughs> <laughs> I'm right now. Now, if you're watching this recording, I'm reading comments that are hilarious. Some of these girls are hilarious. I'm just saying. <laughs> but I guess, get guys. The the thing is, is try it. Just try it. <laughs> try to do the little example, the one little exercise here. Putting your passion in the middle. And putting a, you know, putting um, your the three random, three random things off your list, and and just playing with it, play with what kind of connections you get and see. Just play. I know this. I made it sound maybe overcomplicated. I try not to do that, but I, you know. <clears throat> Okay, I'm still recording. I hope I'm still... It looks like I'm still here. Hopefully we're still good. I'm still recording, guys, so I don't know if y'all froze. I think I froze for a second, too. I thought it was my mail, but it could have just been a freeze on you stream. Let's make sure my... It looks like I'm still recording and everything. Yeah, I'm still rolling. Okay, now I'm gonna we'll 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 kind of go with some tabs here for a minute. <laughs> so here's some more homework if you want to do this. Fleshed out ideas. That's a good way to say it. Fleshed out ideas button. And I'm, that's a that's a that's a term. Fleshed out ideas, but button reminded me. <laughs> this is why I'm not a teacher. Fleshed out ideas. 
Yes. Oh, see, now Button's going to make a journal page. We're still on the tour. Okay. All right, so now I, I did a little bit of, of questioning on the tabs. Now, I may should wait till next week, but I'm going to go ahead and keep going because some of the stuff, I'm, I, I want y'all to get rolling with things, and so I'm, it's probably going to sound like a lot. <laughs> it's going to sound like a lot today. But I want y'all to get rolling with it. The three. <laughs> with the skipper. Oh my gosh, now I can't see. <laughs> Thank you, Connie. That's going in the wing nut book. We're going on the three-hour tour. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you for that. A little giggle, Connie. <laughs> okay. So here's some things that I wrote down for you to write to think about your supplies. This is a this is a one this is one that we all can relate to because we all have supplies. So again, question everything, including your supplies, because you'll think of new ways to use them. Um, like for instance, the magicals. I wouldn't, you know, if I hadn't really thought outside the box and made different connections, I probably would have never used the magicals on the shells. And then somebody else in the chat said, well, how about because shells are porous? Um, let me pull one over here so you can see. Because shells are porous and we used our magical uh, powders on these last week, somebody in chat said, well, what about using them on uh, unbaked... Um, ceramics so maybe you you know that idea comes to you because you're trying something out and then another idea then another idea then another idea that's why we have Pinterest with thousands and thousands of pins because there's thousands and thousands of ideas the problem the problem with things like Pinterest is they're not your ideas Nothing wrong with using other people's ideas and incorporating them and, and, you know, juxtapositioning them with yours and doing projects together. Don't email me. I'm not saying don't get ideas off Pinterest. But what I'm trying to get you to do is make, get your own. Get your own ideas. <laughs> okay. So here's a bunch of stuff I wrote down to share with you guys on supplies. Um... Okay, first off, what are your favorite supplies? Are they easily accessed? If they're not, is it because they're packed away? If you're moving, you know, we all have circumstances. This is, this. I'm not giving you hard, fast rules, you know. Um, I hear so many excuses about things all the time. Roll with it. Keep, you know... <laughs> And again, I'm not saying that if you're moving, that's an excuse. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's an it's an ex, it's a, a a circumstance that may be beyond your control for the moment. That doesn't mean you can't write your ideas down for later. Yeah, and and Julie Topaz, she just said she has a board full of stuff she found and tried from Pinterest. If y'all don't follow Julie Topaz, Topaz Pearl Girl on, on Pinterest, she's got awesome pins. She's like my Pinterest queen. I don't get over to Pinterest often just because I'm doing Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Ustream. You know, I'm doing, I, I just don't have a lot of time. To, Pinterest is like down further on my list. But uh, Julie Topaz is like one of her main ones. Well, at least it has been. I don't know if it still is. Um, <laughs> and, and Brenda, you may not want magicals right now. You're saying, I don't need magicals. However, write down the idea. Write down, I could see myself using magicals with ceramics or whatever, right? 
So even if you don't get it right now or don't buy the supply right now, write down what would you do with it if you had it. You may find, you know what, I, I wrote down all these ideas. I'm not seeing myself really liking magicals. Or you may be writing down hundreds of ideas to use with magicals. You go, gosh, i got to save up and get some of those. You just don't know until you do this, okay? You don't know. Okay, so your favorite supplies, or even you could write down your supplies, all of them, you know? And, and again, don't think that you have to fill every tab up completely before you do the next thing. You know, maybe you have a list going of your favorite supplies, and you write 10 of them come to your mind, 10, dun, 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 and you write down 10. And then you're doing something else, and all of a sudden you remember, oh, I got that too. Go back to your supply list, dun, 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 you just wrote three more. And then you go back to something else you're doing, and you walk into your room or your art space, and you go, oh, I forgot about that, dun, 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 dun. you write that down. So it's an ongoing, constantly changing, constantly adding to. Okay, Valerie. Okay, yeah, I got some. I'm going to do another project shortly. I got some pictures to show, some things to do after this one. But I'm going to try to start the Monday morning shows out with the idea collecting. And hopefully, guys, as we do this, I'll get better at. <laughs> explaining it a little more. It's right now I'm trying to get squeezed so much information into a beginning thing. Because all y'all have got your books, you got your tabs, you're ready to go, and I told you to make lists, and then it's like, well, now what do I do? You know, and so I'm, I'm trying to squeeze a lot of stuff in on these first few, few shows, right? <laughs> okay, well, that, and see, right there, that's awesome. Texas Pearl, she did a page for her washi samples to prevent more duplicates. And then think of this. I can just, this just pictured in my head. All right, so when you said you had a tape of samples in your thing, uh, in your book, I could just see little bits of tape. And every one of those tapes has an idea on them. <laughs> everyone has a color combination, or everyone has a little image. Like this one has pineapples. What is pineapples? Pineapples are friendship. And friendship means sharing. I'm sharing ideas. You see where it goes? It's constantly a, a chain. I mean, I just see ideas as a strand of DNA. <laughs> you know? I mean, I don't know if I can draw it. But, you know, you know how the DNA strand. <laughs> I just, you know, how it kind of curves around, you know, the strand. There's a name for this anyway. Um, <laughs> I just, that's how I see ideas. They're connecting, they're interweaving, there's just so much. <laughs> oh, Lordy Lou, yeah. Okay, so let's go back to our supplies. Are they easily accessed? The reason I ask this question is, if your supplies are, and again, if you're moving, don't email me. My supplies are in a box because I'm moving. Don't, you know, I don't mean you, then. <laughs> Um, what I mean is, in, in, in your space, are you are they easily accessed, or are your pencils, instead of being right handy and able to use, are they in a box in your basement? Well, that's not doing you much good, is it? <laughs> so that's that's kind of what I mean. Okay, we got the sun coming in here. Let's kind of. Okay, why why are your favorite supplies the your favorite supplies? What makes them your favorite? And this stuff takes thought, guys. It takes sitting down and really thinking. Why do I love pencils? I like the fact that I can blend them. I can shade them. I love shading. They're so versatile. I can use them on anything. They go over anything. You know, there's just, so there's, but write those things down. And I know it seems so simplistic in Writing down, why do I like color pencils? But trust me, it's in the doing of it. It's in the doing of the writing and the questioning that you will find more and more things come to you. And things will come to you that don't come to me. Things will come to Pat Crochets that won't come to Suzanne. 
And I just saw two names in there. Things will come to Travis that won't come to Brenda. And so it's, it's so personalized. And that's why I tell you I can't just give you formulas and, you know, just go off of my list of people, places, and things. Just go off. Of, it doesn't work that way because everybody's creativity and imagination is different. And, yes, you have creativity and imagination. <laughs> if you don't think you do, you're kicked out of the idea society. <laughs> Not really. Just stick with it. Stick with it, people. Okay. What have I used them for? So let's just say you pick a, a supply. I'll just go with pencil. I'll go with color pencil. I'm just, and again, this is an example. Don't go make you a list of color pencil. That's not the point. What have I used them for? So I've used mine for color booking, sketching, uh, coloring in quick ideas, my portraits. And then from portraits, I think, well, I've done people portraits, pet portraits, uh, fan art portraits. And then I think, oh, I've posted my fan art portraits on Facebook, you know, and it expands out. And then maybe I'm thinking by the time I get to, oh, I've posted my fan art portraits. I've posted them on Facebook, but have I ever posted them on Instagram? Did I ever post them on Twitter? And why didn't I post them on Twitter? And is Twitter not my main place that I want to post my art? Why don't I post my more art on Twitter? Oh, because that's more my social media place. Twitter's more where I do more talking than showing my uh, finished works. I post works in... Pro See how I'm going with this? See how the, the ideas just keep flowing? And for some people, this may be very like, well, that's obvious. But have you written it down? Because I'm telling you guys, I cannot stress it enough. If you don't write it down, they're not the ideas will not expand in the same way. You might get one idea in your head, like the one I just said about going from Facebook to Twitter. Why don't I post more? You might get that one idea. But if you write it down and, and mind map it out, you'll have hundreds, if not thousands of ideas off of one thought. Okay, so what have I used them for? Like I said, why are they my favorite? What have I used them for? How do I use them? How do I organize them? For me, I've, I've gone through many different systems of organization for my prismas. Other pencils that are uh, more expensive and nicer that I don't use that often, they're in pencil cases. I use these every day. So I want them right here. I want them handy. I have them in bundles. I have the ones that I use all the time right here in a silverware tray. Then I might think, well, is a silverware tray really the best use of... Well, for me, I have explored um, thoroughly what works for me with my color pencils, how I use them, and this I know for now... I'm not saying that there's never, ever, ever going to be another idea about them. But for me, I know that this works the best for me. <clears throat> so that's how I organize my pencils. All right. So let's just say I know that that's my favorite medium and that we're exploring right now. You can do this with multiples. You can do all these questions with a separate. You can do this with all these with a watercolor. You can do all this with your paper products. You can do this with whatever your your supplies are, your markers, you know. Who's my favorite artist that use them? So we all have our favorite artists that we've seen use those supplies, maybe more than one. Write, write those favorite artists down. Do you follow them? Do you, uh, do you follow their YouTube channels? Do you follow their vlogs or their blogs? Or, and then why do you follow them? Is it just because, do you follow those people because they have great pencil ideas? Or do you like something about their personality that engages you, that makes you want to try those pencils more? Write those questions down. How do they use them? Do you like the way they use your, their pencils in portraits, in drawing, in color books? Do you like the way they blend? Do you like the way they... What is it? How do they use them and why do I like that technique? 
what other supplies could accomplish this technique do I only can I only accomplish what I want with Prismacolor pencils could I accomplish that with other things could I combine other things that these kind of questions is what made me come up with using acrylic paint as a wash uh, as a base and then putting my color pencils on top of that that's what made me come up with it is by doing questioning <clears throat> And, and Travis says he's doing a page for each of his favorite artists. And that's excellent, Travis. See, I didn't even think about doing that. I'm going to write that down. I usually don't make a full-on page for my favorite artist, but a page for each fave artist. And I try to write down like Travis suggested that. I try to, anytime y'all tell me ideas or things like that, I, I try to flesh down ideas. That was Button. Three hour. <laughs> that, was, that was just something funny. Connie. So I try to um, note who, you know, says what. It just, I like to do that. Not everybody does. But anyway, so Travis is going to do a page for each of his favorite artists. And if he explores... Why do I like that artist? How do they use their technique? Where are they? Are they on, you know, write down all their places that you could find them. Where do they sell? How do they sell? Do they sell? Uh, how much do they sell? Could I do something like that and sell? You know, you write all those questions down and, and flesh out those things. <laughs> well, I'm just talking about Prismacolors because that's my my example. But again, don't don't make this about Prismacolor pencils, guys. That's not where we're going with this. The point is yours, your favorite supplies. Um, what other supplies could accomplish this technique? Do other artists use that technique? Have you seen them use it? Well, what if you know? I don't know. I've never seen anyone use that, so try it. Um, and then your online sites and the people that specialize in the supplies I love or the techniques I want to learn. So, for instance, I'm sure Jean, probably in her phone, well, she has it now in her head, but, you know, at some point she probably has a list of uh, people that she um, likes in watercolor. Okay, I like, there's certain people that I like in the color book community or the, you know, color pencil or there's just people I like, I like in the comic book industry because I, I like that. Um, it just depends on what your passions and your favorite things are, but you need to keep them down. Now, let me say this, most, and this is kind of can be bad. Because if you lose your online list, if let's just say you don't cloud enough or you lose your, uh, your list of all, let's say you have a list of 100 watercolorists that you love and you got it online, you got it on your phone, maybe you cloud it, maybe you back up, and maybe you're good on that aspect. I'm not that good at it. So if I lost my list of all my favorite YouTube channel people that do, say, color books, I'm going to have to really, you know, that's why I tell you to have a reference, have a reference tab. Even if you just wrote down the minimal basic, you don't have to write down www.htp, YouTube dot slash, color pencil slash, you know, <laughs> at least write down color pencil, color books, and their name, U YT, YouTube, or something, you know. <laughs> Art is as much about inspiration as the doing, because without inspiration, you can't create. Exactly, Jean. And this, for me, is... I, I'm trying my best to share ideas on that inspiration, imagination, creativity, and all that. How you you get it in your brain. Because to me, the saddest thing I hear, and I'm not joking, guys. It's very, very sad to me. When I hear people say, I have no imagination. Because it's just so not true. It's like I told you about the muscle. Can you say, oh, you know, I have no arm muscle because I can't pick up a five-pound dumb weight, dumbbell? No, it's because you haven't used that muscle. So this just, uh, think, of, think of creativity and imagination as a muscle that you have to develop. And, t and trust me, the more you do these types of things, and it doesn't have to just, there's millions of ways out there. Go, go look up mind mapping. Go look up, you know, there's millions probably of ways to do this type of thing. 
I'm just sharing you my way so that you can develop your what works for you. Oh yeah, Pat said, you mean like yesterday when I managed to wipe out all my people list on Pinterest. Sort of like that, Pat. <laughs> And, and that too, Aaron, uh, uh, the second saddest thing is uh, I'm too scared to fill in the blank. Yeah. And I think basically it comes down to, you know, when people say I have no imagination, I think it does come back to fear. It's, it's you know, m are they afraid of that they may have one? And then that if they get an idea, they may actually have to do something to develop that spark. You know, that can be scary. You know, what if, uh, and I'm going to use Kate because she's handy. <laughs> Kate is Kate because she used gardening as one of her passions. You know, what if Kate decided, I don't want to do an idea book. And she may not even consciously think, I'm afraid. But what if she didn't do an idea book because subconsciously she's afraid that she may actually have to write an article or draw some pictures, draw some botanicals and write an article on gardening. And somehow in her head she knows she's capable of it, but she's too afraid that she may actually have to do something. And, I, and again, guys, tr that's nothing to do with Kate. It's just that I'm using gardening as her passion. She did make a book, so <laughs> she's obviously not afraid. Um, and Jean says the fun thing about music and art is that you can do in your own bubble unlike, unlike your job you don't have to share your work if it doesn't work out you can learn from it move on right and, and here's the thing exactly Jean but when you start having your ideas and your imagination you're going to want you can't not want to share it just like you Jean in your watercolor you, I can remember five years ago guys if you, did, if you knew Jean five six years ago she was afraid to literally touch paint. And now you, Jean has come so far. But if Jean would have been afraid to make that watercolor book, paint those watercolors, and she'll be the first to tell you she's in the learning stage. She's learning. She's exploring her supply. She's learning which watercolors make what. Her, she's made color charts and swatches. And But if at the beginning Jean would have said, oh my gosh, you know, if all that, <laughs> that could have just forced her not to even try. But she did it. And so she got past the fear of knowing she had to do something. So she made a watercolor book. She learned about supplies. She's out there practicing in front of us. And her sometimes her stuff doesn't turn out. And that's a learning experience for all of us that Jean is sharing with. She's saying, okay, look, and, and I tell y'all that here too. If I do something that doesn't turn out, so what? You learn what not to do. That doesn't mean you don't try, guys. Jean, me, all of us streamers, we're out there doing it live. There's no editing. We're not, like, this is it. You know, like, I'm trying to explain this to you. It may not come across 100% clear, but we're going to get there. <laughs> But we're doing it. We're doing it. Yeah, and that's one of the nice things about our group, Gene, and I think the the people that are follow us uh, amongst our YouTubers and our Ustreamers, for the most part, we're we're very um, non-judgmental in our in our try in in what we're doing. We rarely, if ever, have anybody now. <laughs> I'll tell you what in on YouTube in a minute, but, you know, because there's more people on YouTube. Amongst our 100, 100, 200 people that uh, travel amongst our Ustream group, we're very understanding. We know we're all learning. We're, we, if we mess up, we all say, oh, it's okay. We learn not to use matte medium on a piece of tissue paper because it'll roll up and crumple up like a bug in heat. In, in the heat, not in heat. <laughs> I don't mean a bug in heat. I mean a bug in the heat. And so we don't try, we don't treat each other that way. So we do feel <laughs> uh, bye blue. So uh <laughs> CC said she was asked to write a monthly article in the newspaper just because I sent one in on my eighth year, but now but but now it takes the discipline and desire. It that's true. 
and I will tell you this guys the other thing about doing this kind of thing where you mind map out and question things and have lists that you can pull from random ideas from random lists just to get your thought process going and your inspiration flowing it will make you more uh, inspired just doing those kind of things will inspire you if you say I don't know what I don't feel like oh, nah, 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 nah. pull out your list pick just pick ran three random things off your list and what can you come up with if you don't know what to draw go to your list which you have to have a list of all the people places things animals occupations transportation any kind of list that you can make inventions I have a whole list on every invention every um, discovery list 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 that you can pull from and randomly combine things from those lists then you will never have a problem finding something to draw even if it's an astronaut gardening with a pen you've got something to draw <laughs> you've never seen a bug in <laughs> okay so let's get back to our supplies uh, so we said what online sites and that specialize in those supplies that and I put in parentheses that I love so or that you love or techniques I want to learn so let's just say oh my gosh I love the way that girl shades with those pencils where can I learn that well there's plenty of places you can learn for free if it's shading pencils you can learn here <laughs> you know but it can be whatever watercolor um, the, the, the mind of watercolor Steve um, it's just the, the one I know the most and that I like. I like Steve. I like his personality. I like his YouTube channel. Uh, and let me make a note to link his channel. Mind of Watercolor. So that I can put that link in the description box with the video. Um, so let's just say that you love the way Steve teaches. So then watch Steve's videos and take notes. Why do I like Steve? What what techniques is it is it his landscapes that he does is it what kind of supplies does he use does he teach a class does he sell classes do I need to take one of those classes I don't know that he does have you know teach paid for classes but let's just say he does you know write those things down while you're watching Steve you should always at least at the minimum have a post uh, post-it notes in hand no matter what you do I mean like if you can attach this to your body <laughs> If you could have this attached to your body like an eye watch. <laughs> All right, so Happy Race is socializing is her problem. Okay, well, let me ask you this. While you're socializing, there are things out there that while you're, let's just say you're scrolling through Twitter. I don't know what you mean by your socializing. I don't know what your socializing is, uh, Happy Ray. There, are every place, every time you click past somebody, there's an idea and an idea and an idea. It may not be an idea you like or an idea you may think you'll use, but trust me, if you write down, you know, that one thing that you see fly by on a post it note, or you can get small post it notes, you're gonna, they're going to build up into more th thoughts and more ideas. Jean says she likes his vignette style. Though she hasn't tried it yet. <laughs> what Dorothy say? I don't know. I don't know if I want to read what Dorothy and Jean are talking about. All right. So what class or videos would teach me better to use this supply? And again, that might just be your one or two favorite supplies. And I just wrote down the first questions that came to my mind, guys. We, I could probably fill a book on questions of just one thing, one topic. Because it doesn't end. Because once you have the answer to this question, what online sites are people? Then you could go from that people. Well, who, what, why? Why do I like that person? Where are they? How do you know? It's, it's, it's. Then you can question each site. There's just no end to questions, and then therefore, from those questions, finding answers for yourself. Finding the answers. You screenshot happy. Well, there you go. You're doing, you're keeping it. However, let me say this about if you just screenshot an idea. It's it's on your computer, but it's not in your idea collecting notebook where you can take and question that that one idea. It's just sitting in your computer. 
Now again, you may get one you may get an idea from that one thing in your computer and it may stay in your head, that one thing. But if you write it down, you're going to get hundreds if not thousands of ideas. I'm just trust me guys, you until you do it, you will not really believe it. You will not believe it until you do it. <laughs> yes, this is how I came up with the bagpipe chicken. Okay, rabbit trail. So, <laughs> so y'all know that there was the sketchbook uh, summer summer sketchbook. Fill a sketchbook in July. Well, I didn't come near filling a sketchbook. One sketchbook in July. I've <laughs> I've worked in so many different sketchbooks, idea books, color books, and all the other things. I just did not fill just a sketchbook because it wasn't the only thing I was working on however they would give you prompts and sometimes if the prompt uh, overlapped till the next day like one day the prompts were chickens the next day the prompts were robots well so when it came to time for me to sit down with this sketchbook that I didn't finish I said oh we got chickens and robots I don't have time to do both so we're going to do some chicken robots and then uh, <laughs> so I came up with a couple different sketches from that. Let me just come on. Okay. And cats. So cats was one. So I did robot cats. Because I didn't have time to do just cats. And I didn't have time to do really just robots. So I did robot cats. Although then I had to draw uh, Rosie from the Jetsons. And then I drew some robot eyes. And of course I'm always listing. So I was making lists of other things. Um, make a make robot drawing made up from fishing lures, pieces of tools, kitchenware, jewelry parts, computer parts, old phone parts. Make a robot out of those. I mean, draw it. Draw it. Now, I'm not a 3D person. I don't physically glue those things. But so I made all these different kind of robot eyes. Then one one of the um, one of the prompts was knights. So I started doing. Well, let's do a robot knight. And then as I was doing the knights, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm loving some symbols on the knight. So let's go back. What about some symbols? So I looked up the alchemist symbols. And I love the alchemist symbols, not for necessarily for what they are, like the spirit of silver, mercury, copper. I, that's not so much important at this point. I mean, that, that's important in another, in history. But um, I love the symbols. So I thought those would be some awesome symbols on the robots. What if the knight is made out of platinum? Or Well, there wasn't probably an alchemist for platinum back then. Silver or copper? Then what if that is that this particular robot knight, his symbol is the symbol for silver? And another one might be the, the one for copper. You see how it goes? Do you see how the ideas just continuously connect? And all I did was think of some cats and robots and started this. And then it went to this. And then it went to this. And then it went to that. You see? And then I started making lists. Um, so back to the chickens. Okay, so one of the things, um, one of the <laughs> prompts was chickens. Well, um, I know Rhea, the naked bird's not a chicken. <laughs> But I had to draw Rhea the naked bird. And then we had chickens with bagpipes because for some reason, I don't know why Jean. I, I guess I was thinking of Jean when I was, maybe I thought about chickens with music. And then Jean used to play the bagpipe. Jean's a music or a retired music teacher. So I did me a bunch of chickens playing the bagpipes. And <laughs> let's go to some more chickens. Oh, and then I did, where's the one with, the, okay. Okay. So here is where I drew a, a chicken kind of like, I said, well, I'm going to do a metal chicken. Like not really a robot, but kind of a, out of metal plated chicken. I think I had, might have had the knights on my mind. Then that weekend we went to the Andy Warhol exhibit at the High Museum. So I have a bunch of notes here and stuff like that. The High Museum. And I have different things. Robot. Then that can be Rob, Robert, Robot, Rob, Ot. And I just play with words. So I played with the word robots. Anyway, so I came up with the chicken robot. Well, after I finished doing that, went to the High Museum. We slapped Marilyn's head on the chicken. <laughs> so I'm showing you guys how I never run out of art art ideas, you know. <laughs> but I think you know if someone really is into robots, 
battle bot? I mean, I could see a battle, a chicken battle bot. You know. <laughs> Anyway, guys, so that's how it was. Do I have some more chickens in here? I'd do some more chickens here and roosters and chicken feet and chicken feathers. And Anyway, so yeah. So that I'm just showing you as far as ideas for art, inspiration and creativity for my art things. You know, this you may develop into something more with history. When I looked up all these symbols for alchemy to mm -hmm. use on robots based on mercury, silver, copper, or tin to put on the robots as their symbol, then now I'm going to think, well, you know, how, what did they use silver, mercury, copper, and tin back in the alchemist days? You know, what did they... Did, did, how, did they know to combine tin and sil you know copper and tin and make you know brass brass or bronze or you know did they know how to do that and that kind of things and then these are the ones for spring summer autumn and winter and I just hand drew them they're not you know exact but you know I like calligraphy as you, and then I did the other calligraphy thing over here okay so it's a little rabbit trail here <laughs> Highland chickens have under their kilt. <laughs> What do the island chickens have under there? I like that dragonfly. Okay, where's my post-it nose? <laughs> the dragon. Dragonfly. Let's see, dragonfly. Oh, okay, my. This needs to go in the wing net book. What do highland chickens have under their kilt? Okay, so let's do one more. I'll show you one more here, and then we're going to go back to the to our idea collecting book. I'm trying to keep this show. I, just, I know, I get carried away. All right, so here again, uh, I think the, the thing was Vikings. I think the, the prompt was Vikings. Well, I didn't want to just do Vikings. I wanted to do Samurai Vikings. <laughs> so I started combining different things, like the Vikings, and I love lemurs. So I took my lemurs and then a little owls too. But the owl heads reminded me of those kind of helmets like this. I don't know what those helmets are called, but they have lots of, I wrote down lots of rivets. And the helmet shapes are based on an owl head. So I started doing different little helmets based on the shape of an owl's head. And then over here started uh, different patterns that are on the leather of Vikings and Samurais. So the dis just the designs, just look up a samurai um, outfit and look at the patterns and the designs. Okay, so and I have all these different notes over here. Then I started wondering, well, what was the time period between the Vikings and the samurai? Did their time periods overlap? And it looks like they might have. I didn't do a lot of research on it, but I wrote the, the, the time period of the Vikings, the time period of the samurai, and did they have, did they develop the same kind of weapons and armor and stuff? How did they develop it if they weren't in contact with each other? But yet there's some things that are so similar. Do you see what I'm saying? So I write those questions down. Will I ever get back to that? Maybe. Maybe not. But it's not floating around in my head. <laughs> I don't have to worry about continuously thinking about the Vikings and the Samurai. I can move on in my, in my head because I wrote it down. Do you see what I'm saying? But if I didn't write that down, trust me, if I did not write that down or draw this out in a, in a year, I would have never put a connection between Viking and Samurai together. It's just, I would have forgot. So, again, writing this stuff down. And I know you can say, I can put it in my phone. I can put it on my computer. I can save it on Pinterest. And, yes, there, there's a place for all of that. But nothing replaces the drawing, writing, idea, uh, collecting in a book. It just, nothing will take that place. It's because I write it all down, Kmore says. How do you sleep with all that stuff in your head? I write it down. Then I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> so then I went in from the Vikings to the Norse. 
So the mm. Norse made me think of some dragons, like on their ships and things. So I just did some little North made me think of Norse, North. Well, what if in my in this world, North came from the word Norse? I mean, I know it did, but you know, I'm just saying you can make up whole stories if you're a writer. I mean, I, got, I could give you a whole story right here. Hey, Packer Die, Dee, what did you take with you to the museum to take notes? I took this book, and um, I took this sketchbook, and while I was stuck in traffic, I was stuck in traffic for almost two hours before we got to the museum. So where is it? So I drew, um, I drew uh, Giorgio. I'm not saying traffic in Atlanta is caused by aliens, but it's aliens. <laughs> The, the the prompt for the day, the prompt for the day um, was aliens. So uh, sitting in my car, <laughs> I drew Giorgio with alien heads. If y'all know what Giorgio is, he's a guy on Ancient Aliens that says, I'm not saying it was aliens, but it was aliens. You know, if you've seen the meme and all that. Anyway, so he has, you know, big fluffy hair. So I stuck aliens in his hair. Aliens live in Giorgio's hair. So, <laughs> this is the book I took with me, um, Packer Die. Okay, so let's go from that. Let's go back to our idea collecting notebook. <laughs> How much time have we, we got here? Okay, we're going to have to get, we're going to have to move on. I think we're going to have to do some other tabs next week. Okay, so let's finish the supply tab. And again, this is just one thought that I thought to ask you guys to collect for your supply tab. This is just one. So anyway, so what class or videos would teach me to use this supply better? What's the most dramatic way I could envision coming from this supply? What is the most dramatic thing I could think of using my pencils? Is it like the Sistine Chapel? Oh, you know what? I might try to draw the Sistine Chapel in color pencils. If not the whole thing, maybe I'll just draw, you know, part of it or something. But by saying what's the most dramatic thing you could draw or use your supply, whether it's markers, you know, whatever it is, um, just write it down and just try to go with it. What's the most, you, you, you know, I know probably I'm never going to draw the Sistine Chapel with my pencils, but just think about it for a minute. Imagine yourself drawing the Sistine Chapel with pencils. Oh, here's, here's, here, I'll give you this one. I'll give, I'll leave you with this one. Wait, I think I have more on that. Uh-oh. I got another page. I got another page of questions. If you, if you cannot go to sleep at night, for one, if your mind's full, you need to write it down. Okay, if the reason you can't sleep, and again, guys, if you have medical issues, don't email me. Say, oh, I can't sleep because I have a pain in my, I have a cramp in my leg. Don't tell me that. That's not what I'm talking about here. Okay, <laughs> come on now. But I, trust me, I have people. <laughs> oh, I was going to tell you the one thing on the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the funny, the comment that, you know, now we all, if, we, if you're a YouTuber, you're going to get some comments like this. But I had somebody comment on my shell video. You should have left them white. <laughs> now, obviously a person does not have much imagination, do they? You should have left them white. Anyway, I'll leave that there. So if you want to sleep, if you want to, if you want to relax your mind and doze off, and go to sleep. If you've written down any ideas that are just like really firing, right? Sometimes your mind just going 90 miles an hour. If you write the ideas down, then you can relax and say, well, I don't have to think about that tonight because I wrote that idea down. <laughs> we can discuss, we can think about that idea tomorrow. So tonight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay here. I'm going to imagine myself. Um, I'm going to imagine myself on a, on a scaffold and the Sistine Chapel is up ahead of me. And let's say you only can imagine just the, you know, one part of the Sistine Chapel or maybe one of the faces is in, you can imagine because you, you're familiar with it. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you're familiar with something in there. Well, so I'm going to take my pencil and, and in my mind, 
I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to start sketching out that face. Now, I'm literally not holding a pencil in bed. I'm saying in my head. In my head, I'm thinking, okay, so I need to outline that. And I think, didn't they use, like, paper? I mean, I, I know they did. I'm just using this as an example. They took paper and they, they th that's where, I think that's where the word cartoon came from, is that they would poke holes in a big paper and then pounce on chalk and they would make a cartoon to go with, to to use plaster and paint and whatever on the frescoes. Well, what if I'm, though, I use pencils, so I'm going to sit here and I'm going to imagine myself drawing. Just the, 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 the exercise of, in your mind, taking your pencils and coloring it in your head will put you to sleep. I'm telling you. I put myself to sleep painting, sketching, coloring <laughs> it's kind of yeah nighttime meditations with Dee. <laughs> oh i'm sorry connie you kept getting knocked off the stream i'm recording hopefully everything's recording okay so let's go back i'm just saying it will relax your mind as long as you've written down all the the ideas that are running around if you get a lot of ideas like I do you want to write them down but once you've written them down then you can stop thinking about them because you know they're there for tomorrow so now just take out a pencil and sketch let's just say you want to draw better well in your mind pick up a pencil pick up your sketchbook and in your mind start sketching a face then you the eyes and the eyebrows and you you're sketching in your head. I'm telling you people, it will relax your brain. <laughs> okay? Alright, let's go back to some more supplies. What would it take oh so here was my, my last question was what is the most dramatic way you can envision what what project that you could come up from this supply? Let's just say you like paint. Well, what if it was come, the most dramatic thing you could think of was a mural? Well, what would it take to accomplish this vision? Is there a place where you could, even if it's your own wall, could I practice my murals in there? Even if I just sketched out the murals on a piece of paper, you know, draw them out. Does my city have some kind of a thing where young people are uh, promoted to come to this mural and paint? You know, Atlanta used to have that. I don't know. I haven't kept up with it. But what, well, what if you could go down there and help those kids? What if you did a sketchbook full of ideas of murals just for yourself? You just, by questioning and expanding the questions for every one of these, you're, the, the ideas will happen. I'll hold a pencil in my hand. <laughs> goes, I, I'll hold this pencil in my head. I will not hold it in the bed. I will take it here or there. My prismas will go everywhere. Please write that down for me, Prisma. I don't have, I can't, it's going to scroll off before I can get it. Write that down, Prisma. We have a poet among us. <laughs> well, we have a mini Dr. Seuss among us. Oh, I could draw a picture on that right now. Um, what would I need to learn in order to make this vision come true? Even if it's a scaled back uh, vision, it doesn't, you know, you may not be able, if you're in a wheelchair, don't tell me I can't go down and help my kids. And, you know, I hear it all, people, trust me. Um, all right, then, has it been done in any way similar? By who? When was it first done? And again, you can expand those questions out forever. What smaller projects could I do until the larger project is possible? You may, uh, again, you may not be able to go do a mural, but could you get a sketchbook and sketch out those murals? Will a smaller project teach me or lead me in the direction of the larger project? So let's say, I'm just comic books, I, I follow a lot of comic book people that do awesome comics. Well, if, if let's just say you decide you want to do a comic book. Well, 
do you have really the skills and ambition to do a full-on comic? But I bet you could do a zine. You could do a little zine. You know, that may even show you whether you will like, enjoy doing comics or not. If you made a zine. And you make, if, you, if you're having trouble getting through a, a eight page zine, you probably will not have the ambition and the, um, you won't want to go learn how to make a full on comic if you can't get through a zine, you see? So, <laughs> um, is your project sellable? To who? Why would someone want this? How will it help someone? Could I teach this technique? To who? How? Where? You see, so one little, all this question came from, what's your favorite supply? All this is just based on one supply. So that, we'll leave it at supplies. We won't get into words and quotes and everything, you know. But I would suggest in your idea book at least having a color tab, a list tab, and have, of course, have your big questions right at the beginning. I would recommend having post-it notes. So if you don't have your book, whether it's big, small, whatever size book you're working in, keep some post-it notes with you so that you can write them on that. And it, if that all you get to is to slap it, um, slap it down in your book. Now, these are the ones I want to link, so I got to keep those out. So these are all the people I want to link. <clears throat> Prisma needs to be in the wingnut book. Well, yeah, write it down, Prisma. I will put that in the wingnut book. If y'all want to know what the wingnut book is, I show it every now and then because we're a bunch of wingnuts here. So if you say something funny like what Prisma Color just did, or what do Highland chickens have under their kilts? That will go in the wingnut book. I put a <laughs> this is all stuff people have said here on channel during the show that's funny and they just get piled up in here. Again, they're not going to mean anything to anybody else like Denise when she was here helping me, you know, clean one time. She uh she goes, "What's this?" And and uh I said, "Well, there're funny things people have said during the show." And I said, "Go read one." And she she opened it up and sniffa tonic coma catching sense of Crayolas. That was from Juanita. Well, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> sniffa tonic coma clutching her oh, clutching her scented Crayolas. So y'all know we love to uh, smell our Crayola crayons around here. So Juanita made the funny that said sniffa tonic coma. <laughs> I get it, cause we, I, you know, cause I get it. But if you're, you know, if you're just reading this as a stranger, you're going, what? A sniffatonic coma, clutching her scented Crayolas. <laughs> oh, no, I, y'all know what I mean by don't email me. I mean those mean comics, comments, you know. <laughs> yes, I got the Highland chickens. Yeah. Oh, they have chicken tenders. <laughs> girls could write your own comic you could you I mean your own comedic uh, your own material your own comedic material <laughs> so dragonfly said what a highland chickens have under their kilts and prisma said chicken tenders <laughs> oh my gosh I can't see my eyes are watery <laughs> I can't see seriously <laughs> Okay, so we're going to leave it at that. All right, again, do the, do, make your list. Okay, let's go back to, see, look, I didn't get to nearly any of the, all the stuff I want to tell y'all. Um, go to your list. Did I have the list in this book or was it, oh, it was in this, no, it was in this one. The who, what, where, when, why, how questions connected to your, to your uh, list. Hang on, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? here okay 
So make your list, people or occup uh, occupations, 50. I would say 50. And you can add as many as you want. You can have a whole book of lists. Have a list of places. Okay? That could be anything from the subway to France. Just places. 50 of those. And then 50 things. A phone, a pen, a coffee maker. But it can be anything. Just 50 things. And then have you a couple of color combinations. I use designs-seeds.com. <laughs> Chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm writing this down. <laughs> Sorry guys. Uh, uh, so anyway, um, yeah, let's move away from <laughs> And then, like this week, I gave you the numbers, 14, 30, and 2, random numbers. So if you have a list of 50 things, take from your people or your occupation. And you can also have another column with transportation, uh, discoveries. Like I said, you can make your list anything. Make as many lists as you want. And then just pick number 14, number 30, and number 2 off, the, off whichever list you pick. And combine those with your passion. So again, we use Kate the Skate gardening passion uh, as our example. And we came up with, you know, astronauts a pen and uh, what was the other one? France. <laughs> Men have nuggets, women have tenders. <laughs> women don't wear kilts though, do they, Prisma? <laughs> you girls. Okay, so anyway, Concentrate on a, one of your, you know, passions, whether, whether that's reading, writing, gardening, music, photography, drawing, um, you know, whatever it is. But, but you know, try to keep it as, as narrow as you can uh, because otherwise you're going to have too many passions at once. <laughs> let's, let's keep one passion going at a time. And then pick from your list. <laughs> And, and, and question. Use your questions. Again, this. So, again, if, if I would recommend any kind of tabs, you know, have, have questions, uh, no, I mean, uh, words, colors, lists, quotes, references, and then your passions. Like mine could, might be, you know, color pencil portraits, history, you know, yours might be gardening, music, whatever your passions are. So make tabs for what your loves are. And I think, guys, I, I mean, I could keep going for hours. But I think that's enough for one day. Because <laughs> I know it's overwhelming until you do it. Once you do a few of these, you know, idea expanding techniques, you know, once you do it, you'll go, oh, okay. And then you're going to want to, you'll fill composition books up. That's why I'm saying a composition book will not hold you for long. <laughs> yes, guys. All right, so I'm going to stop this video. Then I'm going to uh, come back and show a couple of pictures. And then we're going to color. So what time is it? 11, 12. Okay, I got two hours. Um, don't forget uh, Monkey Island Madness Janet streams at 1. And music scrap Jean, mus the musical scrapper Jean, who she doesn't really scrap anymore. She's all into watercolor now. So if you want to see Jean learn, she's teaching herself watercolor, and she's doing awesome. She's the musical scrapper, and she's on at four Eastern on UStream, and both of them upload to YouTube. So if you want to find uh, uh, Janet, the monk, monk, Jan is monkey, I Janet is Monkey Island Madness. And Jean is the musical scrapper at four. And, and Janet comes on right after me at one. So I better go because I've got two hours because we're going to color. We're going to color in uh, seasons. So we'll be right back. So thanks, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you all have any questions, put it in the comments. But be nice. Be nice, people. Okay. <laughs> Bye.